Hi, this video is covering the QuickBooks desktop and setting up the web connector portion. To get started, click on Integrations. Once you're on this page, on the right side, you're going to see this area for the desktop web connector. Go ahead and click the eye icon. This is going to access the website to be able to see the instruction guide. Start off here in step one and follow the instructions. Make sure you do perform a backup of your data just in case you have to successfully restore your QuickBooks for any reason, if there's any data that's corrupt, anything like that, you're able to successfully restore it. Step two, integration setup. If you haven't already done so in Project 360, you're gonna to wanna to follow these instructions. Go to the settings area, click on configuration. And on the right side here, you're gonna see the settings to be able to configure your account types. So some things to note, account names in caps are not valid. So it's only one account per type. Keep that in mind for your income account, cost of goods, asset, item, labor, and your timesheets. If you are not going to be using any of these areas, we still require you to fill this, these empty areas out. So you could, for example, use your company name, just says leaving it instead of empty, replace it with your company name, timesheet. And that's for example, if you weren't gonna use timesheets, just still fill out the name with something there. So to show you here in Projects 360, um, before you get this area to expand with the dropdown, this area does have to be, be filled out first. And that's right over here under settings. So these are just some examples. You're going to want to set these up to match your own accounts in your QuickBooks desktop. If you're unsure, reach out to your own accountant. You can call QuickBooks desktop to go over which types you should be setting these up as. If you hover over the eye icon, it does show you. So the income account must be a valid matching account in your QuickBooks desktop. Same as your cost of goods, your asset account, in your item, your labor, in your timesheets, if you notice, these ones are all gonna be list names, while these three up in the top here are chart of accounts. So take note of that to show you what it is in QuickBooks Desktop. Those can be found here. So going right here, if you're under the list area of your QuickBooks Desktop, I'll go ahead and expand this a little bit. So under list view, you have a chart of accounts area and an item list area. So for your actual income, cost of goods and asset, again, you're gonna to wanna to go to list, click on chart of accounts, and then go through your accounts that are listed here. And make sure by type, you're choosing the proper income account. So right here on the type, any of these income accounts will work. So wherever you're sending that information to, you're gonna to wanna to make sure those match up with the exact name as you have specified here. So these ones here are actually item list names. So under list, the item list names, those ones are gonna be set up under here. So once you're in here, I'll go ahead and expand this as well. And you can also create new names if needed. If you want to have it designated specifically for project, you can set up how we did here or with your own company name and then specify it as item and labor. Or you can use from an existing something that you already have set up here for your account types. So again, it does have to be this name that you specify here. And it is only one list name per type. And that's gonna include for your items and your labor items that push over from your invoices. So going back to the guide, once this is all set up here, you can scroll down after all your accounts are filled out. Um, we do have some examples here as well if you wanna reference how these are gonna come over on your invoices. If you go ahead and click the example, this will open a new window and this is how it's going to come over for each of your item lines along with the description that gets noted right here. 
And we do also show an example on the timesheets for those list names, how those are going to come over under service item. So some things to note, there is an area for last synced adjustments. That is right here, last synced adjustments. So if you do want to set those, we explain that right here. If you do not choose to set it, all invoices that meet criteria will be pushed up to QuickBooks on the first sync. This can duplicate if items in your QuickBooks already exist and you already have them set. So if you set the timesheets as well, the last sync date and time, and this stuff is optional. If you do not set this, all timesheets will be pushed up to QuickBooks on your first sync. And again, this can cause duplication if you already have them set. So the next step what you want to do is set up and create a strong password for your QuickBooks Desktop Web Connector settings. So as you show here, if you go ahead and click on back to your environment. So right here, set reset web connector password. So make sure you do keep this in a safe spot once you do set your password. And this is going to apply again for the connection when you get the web connector downloaded. So again, write that down. So moving on to additional requirements and settings to take note of. Uh, QuickBooks Desktop should be set to charge sales tax with at least one tax item labeled as tax. The QWC file when loaded into the web connector has a one-to-one -one relationship with the company file that was open and permissions approved for. If you need to change it by the company file for any reason, you will have to download a new QWC file and load it for that company as well. You can schedule the web connector to auto run every however many minutes if you desire. You can still manually update when it's scheduled like normal. Do not set this for less than 30 minutes. Click remove to completely remove the ability of the web connector to communicate with Projects 360. You can always load another QWC file if you desire to have the connection back. So this here is a detailed explanation of how this works. So you have your web connector piece. So we use that web connector to facilitate any communication between your desktop software and our cloud service. So that web connector portion has to be installed first, and then the PC must have a valid internet connection to be able to communicate with our service. So once you're ready to do so, information about the web connector installation instructions and download link can be found here. Once downloaded, install the web connector. And you will also need to download the QWC file that tells the web connector how to communicate with Projects 360. So clicking on the web connector information page, this will direct you to the QuickBooks website. Go ahead and download the latest installer. So follow the instructions here for one through four. Once you've done so and, and include the, the latest version and get this installed, everything will be set up. So once you've done so and have the web connector piece, you're going to have a piece of, of software like this on your desktop for the web connector. I chose to install mine and pin it to the desktop menu. So this web connector piece will look like this once it's installed. Once you have that, go back into Projects 360, download this QWC file. It's going to be located right here. If you go to your programs on your desktop, you're going to see this under your downloads area. So this, this is your QWC file that you will need. So keep this. Do not rename it. Leave it as is. Make sure you don't have any other instances where you've downloaded it multiple times and have a one, two, or three after it. It has to be projects360.qwc. So once you have that file right from here, Go ahead and make that established connection. Uh, make sure you do have QuickBooks Desktop already open just in the background, have it minimized. Once you have all that set up, again, go ahead and follow the instructions here. Um, you can confirm and put your password in as it says here to make the connection.
And once you're ready here, again, the next step is to add the application. So that QWC file that you do have in Projects 360, um, once you've taken that, go back to your web connector piece, hit Add an Application. Go ahead and look for this under your Downloads area. And you're going to want to click this button here. Um, I'm not going to want to replace it, but it's going to prompt follow the on-screen steps to allow the application to access. Once you have done that, you're going to get this application right in here. And this is what establishes the connection. So each time that you're going to be able to run the connector, you can go ahead and click the check, and you're going to be updating selected. Anytime you sync information, if you do not want it to sync, don't go ahead and update the selected. So once everything's been set up, if you go back here under integrations, if everything's successful, you will have the drop down here, being able to sync additional information. And right on your guide, you can go ahead and close everything else out. So as it says here, syncing items between Projects 360 and QuickBooks Desktop using the web connector. The syncing process between Projects 360 and QuickBooks Desktop using the web connector is best described as Projects 360 putting items into a mailbox that waits for the web connector to pick up the items for QuickBooks. And then the web connector itself leaves items in that same mailbox with the response from QuickBooks. This disconnected way of communicating has some additional steps needed to process the data. So you may not need to sync some items a couple times before all the matches and items have been processed fully. In the integrations menu, you should now see the integration panel for QuickBooks Desktop Web Connector. Any errors, if you do have an error, our common error is the error unique file ID required. So you can go ahead and follow QuickBooks instructions on how to get that cleared out. Once you've done so, it's going to be following our same steps to make sure you get that connection established. Thanks, everybody. The next video up, we'll be going over and covering our client data. Thank you.